can live on me. Jesus said, you can live on me. And I won't let you fall if you just leave. Oh me Jesus said you can live on me Jesus said you can live on me and I want you fall if you just leave on me. Jesus said, You can leave. Jesus said, You can leave. Hey, Jesus said, You can leave. to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power as we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Holy Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray and holy manna shall be showered all around. Give respect to clergy, to deacons, deaconesses, to all my father's children. We are blessed among thousands to be in the household of worship one more time. Y'all, it's good to be home. And in fact, I preach my mother's eulogy behind this desk right here. Amen. I'm, I'm a Floridian raised here in Fort Myers, right down in the bottoms. 
Amen. Some of you may know me as the phone man. I see Miss Otter out there, amen. In fact, I was baptized at Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, the old church, under the late Nelson Reigns, amen. Amen. I see so many Jerusalem members here with me today. I am happily proud, if there's a such word. Amen. Amen. We bring you greetings from Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in the city of Leesburg, Florida. My lovely wife, Jacqueline Person, is out there, Jacqueline. If you would, please, ma'am, stand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to hold you long, amen. I often say I'm bought with a price. That is the hymo. That is the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Choir, you took up my fancy, amen. <laughs> amen. Reminds me, amen. Did I tell you I was both raised here in Fort Myers and Pittsview, Alabama? <laughs> amen. City and country. <laughs> Y'all talk to me here. In fact, I went July up there to see my grandma, who's 104 years old. I, 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 I believe some of you know Annie Lee Lies. Amen. That's my grandmother. Amen. Oh, let me, let me get to the word and get you out of here. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 10. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. Thank you, Unity, for inviting me. God bless you. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 10, verses 30 through 37. Amen. amen. If you have your copy of the word, have found the place, say amen. amen. And there you'll find these words. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, the Levite, when he was in the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And then tomorrow, when the departed, when he departed rather, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he answered, he that showeth mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do thou likewise. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just need a few amens. Amen. We can go home and get some chicken, amen. Out of the said red passage of scripture, I want us to drop down into verse 30. And you'll find these words again. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him, watch this, y'all, half dead. 
I want to tag the text with the subject. I want to talk about you left me here to die. If you be so kind, there's a neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, neighbor. you left me here to die. But he came by. Y'all ain't feeling that already, are you? You left me here to die. But he came by. I wonder, can anyone remember and Recall a decimal jury and dark period within your life in which you were a victim of this text where you were theoretically left for dead. I'm talking about when family and friends have given up on you, leaving you with a bitter and broken spirit while you lay there in a dreadful condition bruised, battered, and beaten, and scarred by life, seemingly without hope of survival. But the good news, beloved, is that your faithfulness during the testing period presented you with a newfound testimony within your now that provided you with a promotional praise of survival that is echoed within our subject today. You left me here to die. But he came by and supplied me what, what I needed. Amen. Amen. Church, aren't you glad that God saw us in our sinful state and provided his son Jesus who sacrificed his life for us? In other words, he took our place. Could you do me a favor and say, tell your neighbors and neighbor, he saw me when I didn't see myself. I wish, I wish I had a witness in this house that can testify that he will come by and take care of you. You, you do know he makes house calls. I'm by myself in here. You do know that the God we serve makes house calls. He will stop by the hospital, stop by your house, stop by your job. He does make House calls. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we got to understand that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. I tell you, he's guilty of making house calls. Hello. Let me call the biblical role. Ask Daniel, he... He will tell us that he took care of him right in the lion's den. Yes, yes, Come on, somebody. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will tell us that he took care of them within the fiery furnace. In fact, he got in there with them. Yeah. Paul and Silas, they will tell us that his presence was felt at midnight in the form of an earthquake that released them out of jail. Ask blind Bartimaeus, come here, boy. He would tell us that he wanted to see, and Jesus stopped by and opened his eyes. Have I got a witness? I tell you, he does make house calls. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, all of them will gladly testify to the fact that he came by and supplied their need Someone needs to hear this. You have all the help that you need for your survival. Have I got a witness in this house? Come here, Paul. Tell us about our source of supply, especially when it has become apparent that we are residing in a period of scarcity. It's right there in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God, your God, shall supply all of our need according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Can I park right here for a moment? Whatever you need. Let me try this side. Whatever you need. 
talk to me. Whatever you need, my God, your God, have it. Y'all gonna help me preach a little bit? If Abraham, <laughs> if Abraham, the father of the faithful, were here, he would attest to the fact that the Lord would give you what you need. But you got to trust him. Talk to me here. You have to trust him and don't doubt him. God will come through for you. Say on, Abraham, or person, when I offered him my son Isaac for a sacrifice whom he blessed me with, uh -huh. And in return, he provided a ram caught in the thicket of God's grace. How many know that God will give you what you need? Abraham will tell us that he is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. So someone needs to, someone needs to hear this, that the Lord will take care of you. He will feed you when you're hungry, give you water when you're thirsty, clothe you when you're naked, heal you when you're sick, comfort you when you're lonely. I tell you, he will supply you with whatever you need. Someone should have shouted right there. Have I got a witness in hell that can testify that God will give you what you need? Come on in here with me. Won't God give you what you need? Come on, somebody. Won't God give you what you need? Just hold on a little while longer. Uh, all I'm trying to tell you is that the Lord will stop by even when others pass you by. Yes, you left me here to die. But he <laughs> came by. Beloved, the Lord knows what we need to survive. Even when it seems as though we have been pushed aside, pulled down, placed at the bottom, pressed against the wall, don't you give up. Get ready, for he will come through. You don't mind if I make a, a man a spiritual phone call, do you? And FaceTime Joseph. the knee baby of Jacob. I want to FaceTime him into our conversation this morning as a material witness who will testify to the fact that the Lord will come through for you. Joseph, I see you, boy. Tell us your story and what happened between you and your siblings. Well, a well, person, my brother got angry. I'm talking about 38 hot and 44 mad. Because God, God showed me in dreams, come on, come on, of what I'm going to do for them. And because of my dream, come on, my family became my foes. And personally, you know what they did? My brothers put me in a pit. And watch this, and left me there to die. But watch this, God. God saw me there, and he sent help. Let me park here for a moment. Somebody may be wondering, where is God? He's right there. He'll send you help when you need help. He may not come when you want him. But I do declare, when he comes, He's always on time. Yeah, y'all, y'all sit down for you make me hurt myself. He's good all the time. Yeah, 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 Joseph. Say on. What person he came by and took me out of the pit and placed me within the palace to provide for them who did me wrong. Isn't it ironic that God? would use what people try to harm and hurt you with to bless you and in return bless them. 
Someone should have shot it right there. Yeah. Person, can I tell you? Can I tell you what I told them, person? I told them, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Yes, you left me here to die, but, but he came by. Let me hasten on. In our textual setting before us, penned by Dr. Luke, the stenographer, we will discover a parabolic answer that Jesus gives to the lawyer as a template into eternal life, in which the astute lawyer in return tried to justify by presenting Jesus with the query, who is my neighbor? He literally takes the witness stand on his behalf for his own defense. Abraham Lincoln said it this way. He got it right when he said, he who represents himself has a fool for a client. He gets to see the lawyer trying to promote his actions toward the judge, Jesus. Huh? The lawyer thought only Jews were neighbors. All others like Gentiles and Samaritans were considered not neighbors, but considered outcasts. This is where this parable begins. As Jesus openly just demonstrates to the lawyer the importance of everyone that is in need. Notice, if you please, three things I have discovered paramount within this parable that will certainly grasp and grip our attention as we encounter three people with different positions, personalities, and practices. You do see them, don't you? Here it is, the priest, the Levi, Levite rather, and the Samaritan, each having been presented with a ministerial assignment to assist those in need. Church, 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 you do know what the Bible commands us to do as followers of Christ. It's right there in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. He said, treat everybody right. Uh, notice, beloved, what each one of these individuals demonstrate within this discourse towards the man that is wounded by life, left to die in need of help. I want each of us to play a part in this text. And that is the role of a certain man. To where it is you lying there, wounded by life, and left to die. Do you see you? Can I show you what happened to you when you saw you there and then you passed by you? Y'all miss me there. Notice the text. Let me show it to you in the text. Remember, this is a parable. Parable. Greek word, parabole. Para. Preposition. Beside. Bale. A balo. To throw. Throw. Compare. Heavenly. Uh, heaven's. Earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. Notice the text. First thing the text is teaches us is that the priest saw him and did what? Passed by. Y'all help me here. Passed what? By him. It's in the text. Let me show it to you. It's right here. Verse number 30 and 31. Look what it says. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from where? Jerusalem to where? Jericho. 
He leaves Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem, come on, somebody. Jerusalem in the biblical topology is that it's 2,474 feet above sea level. So he travels down to Jericho, who, who is, that city is below sea level. So he leaves Jerusalem uptown and travels down in the bottoms. Y'all stay with me, I'm going so well. Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among what thieves? Which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him what half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. First, first thought. The priest saw him. Oh, yeah. Y'all help me here. The priest saw him and did what? Yeah. Passed by him on the other side. The priest, the Jew. The preacher, y'all. Yeah. Let me try the middle aisle. Y'all missed it over there. The preacher saw him. And pass by on the other side. Now, don't get mad at the priest because the priest thought because of the Leviticus law that if he touched a dead body, he would be unclean. So the best thing I should do is just walk back on the other side. Or perhaps the priest may have thought that the robbers were still around the area. Either case, he passed. First thing the text is to tell us, the priest saw him, saw the wounded man there. And y'all, he know what he did. The preacher, y'all. <laughs> Let me go on. First thing the text of Taylor tells us that the priest saw him and went past by. But secondly, secondly, not only did the priest saw him and pass by, but secondly, the Levite was at the place, came and looked and passed by. It's right here in verse 32. Can I show it to you? And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, he did get closer. Y'all missed it? The preacher walked on the other side. But the Levite did get a little closer. It's in the text. Likewise, the Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. I'm talking about the temple administrator. He got a little closer, but not too close. Huh? And then passed by on the other side. The priest is a Jew. The Levite is a Jew. But now on that, my brothers and sisters, I get ready to get you out of here. First thing the text is tailored to tell us, the priest saw him and passed by him. The Levite was at the place, came and looked and passed by him. Well, look here at the text, in verses 33 through 37. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had what? Compassion on him. He felt what he felt. Isn't that just like Jesus to feel what we feel? When we're going through trying times, Jesus feels what we feel. Have I got a witness in him? And went to him. He got closer and went to him and then bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to the inn and took care of him right there. Look at the Samaritan, which represents Jesus. Now, mind you that the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along. In fact, the Samaritans were considered dogs. They were a mixed breed, Jew and Gentile. How many know that God, you ought to thank God, they look beyond who you are 
and then saw what you needed. Mm. Aren't you happy about that? And then the Bible says in verse 35, on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, two denarii, two days wages, and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Can't you see the dignified lawyer said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do likewise. Uh, my brothers and sisters, what we got to understand that when we're going through our down periods, we can trust Jesus. Yeah. How many know in this house that you can trust Jesus? No matter what you're going through. Because I'm a witness that God will pull you out of some precarious situations. But all you have to do is lean and depend on him. And if you lean and depend on him, God will see you through. Have I got a witness in here? Oh, Lord. You see, I tried him for myself. And God, all right, uh, and uh, he made a way uh, out of no way. I'm feeling funny now, y'all. And God, all right, uh, so then I don't know about you, but uh, one day I was left to die. But uh, the Lord, he came by. Have I got a witness in here? Yes, if you could tell your story, uh, I want you to stand on your feet and, and say, neighbor. They left me here to die. But look what God did for me. Ain't God all right? I'm feeling funny now. Help me, Holy Ghost. And I'm glad. I'm so glad that the God I serve will make a way out of nowhere. Ain't God all right? Oh, praise his name. You see, the God I serve, yes. Do you know him? If you know the God I serve, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I know him. I'm talking about Mary's baby. Ain't God all right? The one that fed me, the one that clothed me, the one that put a roof on over my head. Ain't God all right? Is the Lord all right? I'm so glad. I'm glad that the same Jesus, do you know him? The same Jesus, he came down through 40 and two generations. Ain't God all right? Wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid right there in the manger. Ain't God all right? Oh, praise his name. And I can see him as he told it that old rugged cross and went marching out the east gate of Jerusalem. Ain't God all right? Your sins and my sins on his shoulder. Ain't God all right? Oh, praise his name. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. And you know what he did, children? He died. Do you know he died? Oh, he died. They placed him in a bar of tomb. He stayed right there. All night, Friday night, he stayed right there. All day, Saturday, he stayed right there. All night, Saturday night, but early, it was early. How many know it was early? Early, Sunday morning, he got up at the grave. Four days later, all power. All power in my hand. You left me here to die. But he came by. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he came by? And that, that's why, that's why. That's why the hymnist said, pass me not. 
Oh, just a Savior. Here! My humble cry. Why is there no other? Do not. Savior, Savior. No, no, no. Uh, hey, come on, let's sing, children. Lord, Lord, Lord. Let us stand, please. As we open the door of the church. Sing, sing, sing. You may be in this house. Don't know Jesus in the part of your sins. It's time to know him right now. Come. Give your life to him. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Maybe your last time. Sing, sing. me here to die uh, but he came by oh God thank you for Jesus thank you for the message and the messenger hallelujah we come we come to the central part of our worship 
to partake of the body and blood of Jesus in remembrance all that he has done for us. Each time we come to the table of mercy, we come to remember Jesus and his sacrifice. And that this table give us hope because Jesus got up from the grave that let us know that we one day when we We'll be able to get up and go back with him when he comes. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his sacrifice. And thank God for his love. At this time, we will have the prayers of the loaf and the cup. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for stopping by. We thank you for raising us up, for you raising us on that third day so that we may have a way back to you. Lord, we ask all those blessings in your Father's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The scriptures tell us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So who so ever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, we thank you for your precious son, Jesus, that came down to 42 generations so we can have that everlasting life. We thank you, O oh God, as we come to this table of mercy, O oh God, during the end of remembrance of your broken body and spilled blood. O oh God, we thank you, O oh Father God, because if you would have stayed dead, where would we be this day? Oh God, we praise you, but God, because that you alive and you alive and you will. And Father God, we ask you to continue to bless this house, oh God, as we go to the next part of the next service and to our home or where we um, headed to, oh Father God, we pray that your spirit be continue to be with us. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in Christ's name. I pray, amen. amen. First Corinthians eleven twenty-six to twenty-nine. Paul said, Whenever you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord death until he come. So then whosoever eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves.
Jesus was up in the upper room with his disciples, eating his final Passover meal. And Jesus took a loaf of bread. He blessed it, and he broke it and passed it to his disciples. He said, this is, the, this is my body that is broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me, and they all ate together. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is, new, this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. They all drank together. As a supper, they sung hymns and they went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go out to, but we're going to ask that you make sure that you take the Lord with you. Everywhere you go, because he is your sword and your shield. Gracious Father, we thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you continue to guide us and lead us and protect us wherever we go. We pray, Father, for your providential care over our lives. We ask that you bless the food that has been prepared for us. For the nourishment of these bodies now. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. May the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these, thy people, where 
and now and forever. And the church said, Amen.